So, um, as I was saying, you know, you have to find ways to be resourceful and cut, um, cut that budget. You know, you can't, nobody, especially going to the movies, that's something I say, even as a family. That, the reality of it is nobody can afford to do that. If you're saying, you know, I got paid the other day and all my money's gone and, you know, that's just something I don't understand, you know, especially if there are two people that are working and I constantly hear that. Or, you know, there's two of us working and we're struggling. No, you have the wrong game plan. You know, something you're doing wrong, you set yourself up. Um, you need to go back and reevaluate where you went wrong and it probably could have started in the beginning. Um, I said, we um, set up to have a family. We knew, you know, we're not going to live in an apartment. And that's another thing. You, you know, it's okay to start out in an apartment if that's, you know, if that's what you have to do. Most people have to do that, you know. But you're having a family. You want to, you know, you want to raise a family. You want to set a foundation for your family and be a good uh be a good example and home ownership is a great way to show that um, it, it, anybody really can achieve it it's just a matter of how hard you're willing to work at it you know lots of people have been in the military utilize your GI bill you know you got the the, the VA loan or what have you use that um Stuff like that really does help. So don't sit back and say, well, you know, rent is already high enough and this is the only thing we can afford. No, it's actually it's actually uh, better to buy these days. Um, it's getting a lot harder because of the credit. You know, people are running their credit down. But, again, that's because of you set yourself up to fail in the first place. But give these kids, you know, a foundation. So that they can see, break break the cycle of, you know, well, my mom raised us in a project, or my mom raised us in a in an apartment, or you know, this is all we could do. Show your kids ownership. You know, show them that yeah, we can own things. It's not just other people. Um, so that they have something later on and they can say this was my mom and dad's house and they left it to us. Um, it's attainable, you know. You don't you don't want to have three or four kids and still live in an apartment. That, that's just something, it's just going to compound the issue you have to deal with because for one, at a point you're going to outgrow that apartment. And no matter what you do to it, to try to increase, you know, your your space and your uh, maximize, um, you know, the arrangements, you're just going to outgrow it. So be wise. You know, even in buying a house, I encourage the average person when they buy a house and if they're going to have a baby, say they want to start and they want to have one baby, do not go buy a two-bedroom house. I wouldn't even buy a three-bedroom house. Buy a four-bedroom. First of all, it can be done. You're going to want that space. And you're going to find that once you have one baby, you're going to have another one. And then you're going to have another one. And the average person stays in the house about five years. And they don't think about that. And some people say, well, I want to stay longer than five years. But the starter home deal is basically five years. And I wouldn't even stay five years. You know, I'd be ready to go after, you know, one more kid came in and we had four bedrooms, oh, it's time to go because it's just, you know, we've outgrown it. Um, you always want to have an extra room, you know, in addition to, you know, per person. Sure, you can stick two of them in a room, you know, three of them if you have to, but go get what you can get, you know. Go as far as you can you can actually get. Um, that's going to give you the satisfaction in knowing I'll get up and go to work every day and this is what I'm accomplishing 
Um, and everything else will come. You know, it, it's going to fall in place. And you'll see that, okay, this is why she said it's easy. But, you know, like I said, it's not easy. Let's see, my, the first house we owned was one, two, three. It was three bedrooms and a loft. And, no, I take that back. I take that back. We built a four-bedroom home in um, in Dallas. And that home was $82,000. Beautiful. Four-side brick. Um, my only drawback. I didn't get to actually see the house being built because I was pregnant and couldn't travel. So I had to basically pick things out on a, um, it was a video back then. But I picked everything out and not really thinking everything was cream in the house. Um, and I had an 18 month old and a two week old by the time we were to move in that house. Um, the house, I mean, the master bedroom alone was big. I mean, we could have put all the kids in the master bedroom along with us. But, um, in the closet. The house was a su substantial size and a substantial layout. So that's another thing you have to look at. And for the price, I mean, you couldn't beat that. We didn't use a military route because we didn't have to. Um, but we could have. Um, and this was just happened to be, I just said, you know, find me the biggest whatever they're building, and I want the biggest. And that's what, you know, I went for. I didn't worry about how much it was going to cost. I just said, this is what I want, and I know we can do it. And that's pretty much what he did. He said, look, this is what they have. This is the biggest. There's no other house bigger than this. And that's it. Um, so, yeah, we did it. The next one was actually already built. We didn't really have a choice um, as far as building because we were kind of stuck. Uh, we actually had a transfer, so we had to find something um, to avoid going into an apartment, which I was not going to do. Um, and so it was a three-bedroom with a loft, and it worked in the meantime. The intention was not to sell the house, but we somebody actually decided to put it on the market and sell it. Um, it took about five months. We made a huge profit off that house, but my thinking was we said we weren't going to sell this house because we knew we could flip it. And the intention was not to flip it. It was just to keep it for the kids. The intention was to buy a house for each one of the kids, even if they didn't want to live in it. That was our goal, um, my ex-husband and I. So we were, you know, steadily doing that, you know, with two houses under our belt. We were doing it. Um, it just so happened that, you know, after about five, six months, I actually um, had a buyer come in because I was on one left here and it sold. And, um, you yeah, know, we did make a huge profit. But if we had kept that house and came back because we did, we would have had the next house that we bought halfway paid for because that house would have been paid off completely and um, you know the money would have went there and I think that house was about 89 grand yeah it was about 89 um, the last the third house was 192 and it was about six bedrooms um, yeah about 40 what, 4,600 square feet, 17 rooms total. So we moved up progressively. It worked on one income, one. None of my daycare money, um, you know, my, my in-home child care money or any other money went towards these houses. Not that I couldn't contribute, but we did it on one income. And like I said, we went through job losses. So it wasn't the same high income. It was a low income to unemployment income to no income. But it was doable. Uh, we just learned that this is how we need to do things and we're not going to go out frivolously and go shopping every other, you know, day that we get and just buy this and buy that and because I need this and I need that. Even with... It took me those three houses to finally figure out 
how I wanted to actually furnish my house, how I wanted to set it up. And that was, gosh, what, 10 years down the road? Uh, and that was mainly because the kids are little, and I don't want to go through putting a lot of money in my house when I know that they're destructive. You know, kids are kids. But I want it to look, you know, the way we live. You can't live in, you know, 90210 neighborhood and then have, you know, lawn chairs in the living room. Um, you know, we went through a period about two years where there was no furniture in the living room because I had a certain um, style and I could not find it and um, I didn't want to order it. I had actually found some things on Rand, um at Pottery Barn, but um, still had to be ordered. And eventually I found it. You know, it was very, I was I would say expensive. It was cheaper than what I had initially found, but um, the style that I wanted to, you know, set up in the house, and it worked, and, um, you know, we even found a furniture store that did, um, layaway. I had a certain thing upstairs in our game room. It was, like, locker style, and I had part of the stuff that I got from Model Home, um, auction. You know, I, I, I was resourceful that way. The day we were moving in that house, I took advantage and went to a Model Home auction because I knew that I had been through that model home and I saw some things and I said if I can actually win this auction you know this room will be furnished. I don't have a lot because we just bought this house and closed on it and it's a big expense. There's no credit cards. This is cash but I think I can do it. I actually want it. Got what I needed but I needed a little more so we put the stuff in the layaway. You know it took some months to get it out but hey it worked. You know we're not going into debt but we're getting what we need to make sure the kids are maintained. Um, let's see. Slowly, you know, we did things. We didn't go out and say, let's uh, get this American Express and just go charge up these brand new beds and these brand new comforters and deck out these rooms. I was a designer, and I had learned in a previous house that I could paint. Um, one day I'm going to have to get on the um on the computer and I have pictures from my camera and that's just like the best way to pull it up. But I had um did a whole mural. We had a whole upstairs loft. And I did I had an idea to do some ocean theme and I had this mural. So I did this mural and it just made the whole upstairs. And so when I got into this other house I said, Okay and the kids have said, Mom, are you gonna do a mural again? Yeah. I'm going to do a mural, and it started with one room and moved to the next, to the bedroom, to the bathroom. Um, I had never painted anything, you know, besides like a wall, but I learned how to be resourceful. It did not cost a whole lot of money. Um, you know, everybody kind of pitched in with my base coat, but all the other stuff, the creativity, you know, that was just something I did off the top of my head. and. Actually, I could have turned that into, you know, I had people asking me, can you come do my house? So that was a talent I didn't know, but I, you know, I kind of fed into it and said, hey, I probably could. You know, of course, I might have to get licensed and things like that, but I probably could do that. You know, because I had that knack. You have to find something that you can do at home that will bring out that knack and bring in some money. Um... What else did I do? Um, yeah, like I said, we... I'm sorry, I heard something fall. We didn't go out and just, you know, go max out this credit card, buying all this stuff and, um, you know, trying to decorate the place. It was, you know, crazy big, and, of course, we couldn't fill it up because it was just so big, but the idea was to make sure we had enough space for the things that we needed, you know, in order to live, because we were making this home, like, home, to where, to where, um, we pretty much could live at home. We didn't have to go outside home to do anything, you know, we lived in a um 
a subdivision that was very, um, I would say, rich, so to speak, because I, I waited for this particular subdivision to grow so that, you know, it would have everything that I needed, you know, all the amenities and things, that's what I'm trying to say, um, to where, you know, it's everything's right there. All the schools were right there. So the kids would grow up in the schools, elementary, middle, high school, right there. Um, you know, we had basketball courts, tennis courts, um, you know, hike and bike trails, um, I said pools, splash pads, you know, clubhouse, uh, fitness center, um, what else is over there? They eventually built a city park, which was, I don't know, <laughs> what was the city doing? But, um, you know, we had entertainment there. You know, kids could go to the pool and watch movies and things like that certain nights. Not to say we weren't going out, you know, just trying to be frugal. Of course we could do it, but we paid for all of that because it was a fee. We had a homeowner's fee, so we paid for it. We knew what we were getting into, so we figured let's pay for this. Let's keep get these kids outside in this neighborhood that is safe, clean, somewhere they can grow up, you know, and be free, you know, where they can walk down the street and all the neighbors knew them and, you know, vice versa. So that's, you know, that's why I say when you have your kids and you're thinking about how you're going to raise them and how many you're going to have and what you, you know, what you plan to accomplish with them, don't just stick them in an apartment and say this is what we're going to do, you know, and then think that send them outside to the little playground is, you know, sufficient. That's really not the way to live. You know, I'm not going to knock it for anybody that has to do that, but there are ways that you can make it otherwise is, is really what I'm saying. You can go above and beyond that if you want to. Don't become complacent. Um, you know, a lot of moms, like I said, they want to stay at home and raise their kids. Okay, mom, find something that you can do, even if it's at night, even if it's on the weekend, even if it means taking a part-time job on the weekend or at night. Do that. I did try to work outside my home a couple of times. It just didn't work. But I'm not going to sit and say, well, I'm just not going to do anything because I knew at a point in my life, like now, my kids are leaving home. So if I sit, if I had sat and done nothing but shop from day one, all I would have is a bunch of stuff, and I wouldn't know anything but to go shopping. But because I've lived my life to where I can, um, I can maintain myself, you know, by doing whatever to make a living, you know, whether it's in in my house or outside my house or, you know, what have you, I feel that I have not only helped, you know, the kids, but also helped myself. So I'm not stuck because I have all these kids. Of course, I have twice as many kids now as I started out with. But I'm not like, oh, well, now I got, you know, all these kids and I'm just really stuck. No. And I said, I go to work outside my home. And, yeah, it's a major fee, you know, for, as far as child care um, for these three, soon to be four kids. So it's going to go up um, around the first of the year when I do go back to work. So, um, but like I said, it's it's at the point where the older ones are older and it's more of a necessity for me to have to go out because college, you know, there's just no way around that. I just don't see anybody being able to afford, you know, um, two kids, you know, and I'm saying two because colleges, you know, universities, that stuff is expensive these days. You know, I put myself through school, and it was fine. But these days, it's just, it's crazy to think you have to write a check 
you know, for thousands and thousands, twenty thousand dollars a month, and people are like, I don't even make twenty thousand dollars a month. Well, you know, that is the reality of things. It's gonna get to that point, and you have to really, really think about that. Not to scare you away from having these kids, but you know, it's just a reality. You know, it's, it's the way you set you set yourself up. Um, who is it? This uh, Duggar family. You know, I'm not trying to be them or anything like that, but I see what they did. You know, like they. A lot of their principles, you know, they started out young, but they also were resourceful when they were young, so they lived at free now. You know, everybody can't do that, but if you have the right game plan, you're not going to worry about, oh, I'm getting ready to have another baby, you know, like you didn't know where they came from. You know, I didn't panic. I was having twins. I didn't panic. That took me off of two full-time jobs because I had them, but I didn't panic. And I worked one 40 hours and one was probably 80 hours a week. You know, I worked a lot. But I didn't panic and say, oh, man, you know, okay, now I can't work anymore. Um, and these babies are expensive. It's not one, it's two. And mind you, I hadn't had babies in my house in nine years. So I didn't have anything. After I closed up daycare, I pretty much got rid of everything. You know, other than maybe um, a couple of tote bins of um, clothes. You know, there were no cribs, there were no car seats, there was no, um, you know, play pens, no nothing. So I'm like, oh, wow, you know, yeah, what am I going to do? But I knew, you know, setting myself up, this is a possibility, this is what I can do. There are resources out there that can help. Um, even if you're married, you know, single, whatever, divorced, there are resources. It's just a matter of what you want to tap into. Um, you're going to hear people say, well, I don't qualify, or, you know, they told me no. You know what, there's someone else. You know, there's no such thing as you're not going to get what you need. You're, you're going to have what you need. You just need to know who to talk to and... Um, what to say, you know, pretty much, um, you know, because everybody, at that point, I didn't have my mom, you know, of course, I could ask my mom, she, or not even ask, you know, I've never gone to my mom and asked her for anything, nor has she ever just said here, you know, it's just, if it was clothes for the kids, she just bought wardrobes at a time anyway, because that's just how she was, but, um, I've never had to ask her to pay my bills or anything like that, and I was proud of that. I left my home, and that was it, or her, her home, and I was on my own. You know, I just jumped right in. Um, I would send her money. That's how, you know, I had it. I would send her money, yeah. Some of my, you know, whatever, I didn't need it. I sent it to her because I just knew that she took care of me, and I felt that I needed to take care of her. Um... But, yeah, you might not have somebody that you can call and say, can you do this, can you help this way. But, I mean, there's always help, guys. Even going through, like I said, going through um, unemployment, there's churches, there's, um, you know, um, agencies. There's always somebody that can help, resources, you know, that can help you through any financial thing. Um, it's not a bad thing. You just have to know what to do, and you have to know how to maintain afterwards and then you have to pay it forward you know I talked about the child care and the people not being able to afford more than twenty thirty dollars that's all right I know you know I know don't even worry about it because in the end I'll get mine so um, that's really what it's all about you know I think the stigma on um, raising a large family is government assistance, people are paying their taxes be it's so that you can sit at home on your butt and have these kids and they're going out in, you know, communities and they're hell on wheels and whatnot. That is not the case. My kids are straight A students, magna and cum laude students. 
Um, they're exceptional, outstanding students. To, I mean, the te all the you know the school knows these kids. They recognize their brightness individually, and it's rare to have a family that you can say all these kids are exceptionally bright. Even my son that is dealing with um, emotional and some mental issues. Um, he is a very bright kid. He's always been a straight student. Um, I'm not saying that the kids are perfect because the one thing that we are struggling with today is the impact of the divorce. And I'm not going to say that, oh, you know, it's an after fact. I should have um, not gotten divorced. That was just something that was going to happen anyway. It just, I wouldn't have been, I know that. It, I wouldn't have been um, any happier. I wouldn't have been happy, period. I wouldn't have been in any different situation than I was now. I mean, the house, the car, the, you know, the going shopping, it was beyond that. I, it just, it didn't thrill me anymore. I had thousands of dollars worth of jewelry, purses, shoes. You know, I have that. I don't, that's not me. It's not me. It was just because I couldn't get it. And then I learned how to get it. You know, I was able to get it. I had it, and that was it. Um, I still have it. It didn't do anything for me. That's not my life. Um, I have a purpose in life, and that's just not it. So, yeah, you know, I cannot say that I regret doing that. Um, you know, things like that. It just It's teaching the kids something and they're really not going to understand it until they get uh, until they get older they're just not going to understand it period and it's because they're kids you know they're not um mature enough to understand um but i know the foundation that we set for them they are smart enough to know that okay we have um this is what we have to do to maintain um it's not as easy as they had it before where they would just get whatever, whenever. Um, they're not, quote, unquote, you know, spoiled. Um, and they know their, their boundaries now. And they're older. So that was something I was already going to set because they are older. And the older kids get the more they cost and then the more, more things, um, you know, that they want cost, and then they're going to expect it. And I didn't want to raise my kids to think every time we go to the store, they're getting ready to get this video game or they're getting ready to go to the movies or, you know, um, the new movie is out at the red box. No. You know, you need to be able to show me why you have earned this movie, not because we have the money. You know, we are putting that towards college. Again, like I said, you know, this person that is here with these kids um, that does these videos, we see nothing of that. And that just really kind of baffles me to, you know, I can't understand everybody on YouTube, of course, but, you know, I still wonder, you know, what, what are you all doing for these kids? You know, how are they going to make it? It could be that they have some you know, huge stash of money for all these kids to go to college. You know, and even if um, my think was, even if my kids didn't want to go to college or university, um, that I would be able to give them something to put in a business and say, here you go, this is what you do. And whether they, even if they all didn't want to go, I hope that, I hoped that they would be smart enough to pull all of the money and put it into a business so that they can build on their own. So I'm not saying, you know, they all have to go to college or they all go to university or whatnot just because we did. That's just something we did. But I want my kids to do better than what I did. So I expect them to go to universities. You know, I'm not saying, oh, well, don't go because of whatever. I sat here and invested all this time into you. You're not just going to waste your life. You're going to make something of your life. Because I don't want you to look back and say, 
well, you did this and because you had, you know, five, six other kids down the road, um, you couldn't help me. That's not going to be my kids. They're all going to be somewhere. And we know that, you know, even if, um, you know, I don't know if the unexpected happened right now. We, I know that they would all be fine independently. Um, like I said, I set them up. They're, you know, I set them up, raised them with high standards, and they're very intelligent kids. And, you know, they... They under they grasp a lot on a higher level than most kids their age. And so, um I'm doing the same thing with the little kids. Um, you know, and, and the only difference with them is they're young enough now to where I have built a wealth of knowledge and I've gone through a wealth of experience, um, to know, you know, different things that I can do you know, even greater shortcuts that I can take, um, budgeting things. There are a lot, some, I'm not going to say a lot of things that I'm doing differently, but some things that I'm doing differently, um, my kids don't have every pair of different shoes, you know, different color, the little ones. They don't have, um, you know, all these different videotapes and movies and things like that. Um, what else? You know, they they don't have all the, you know, the latest uh, toys and things like that. Because I found that after a while, like I said, even like having my stuff, that got old after a while because you play with it and it, it becomes, you know, just stuff. And then you just constantly, you want more because you see something else. You know, one thing I'm glad we don't have TV because, um, they're not able to look at these Toys R Us commercials and say, Mom, can we go get, you know, can we go get, can we go get, and then I feel bad and say, well, I have the money anyways, you know. No. I'm teaching them a different way. And um, even the older ones know that. You know, they sometimes see, well, they just got new stuff and we didn't get new stuff. But in reality, it's not new stuff. They just got more. And it's something from consignment. Whereas 90%, 95% of all the big kids' stuff is bought brand new out of the store. Because, you know, they're just beyond that now. I'm not say, saying we won't go thrifting or we won't go consignment store for them because they, you know, they're old enough to pick out stuff and they know if they want it or not. They'll go buy it. Um... But the majority of the things that they want, you know, is something brand new. And it, like I said, it's expensive. It's electronics. It's um, makeup, you know, for instance, for the girls. It's a certain type of shoe. It's a certain type of dress. Um, you know, things like that. So it's something that you have to go buy um, straight away. Um, the little kids are growing faster, so of course they're going through wardrobes faster. And I just, you know, again, I learned they have less clothes, I believe, than the older kids did. Because I just, you know, I stopped going, I shop, you see my haul, but that's really nothing. You know, I'm I'm trying to maintain a budget. If I say I had $100, I'm going to consignment next month, I had $100. I would spend $100 on one kid in one day and then turn around and go to the mall again the next day and end up spending probably another hundred on that same kid in addition to everybody else. So they're not, you know, they're not getting more. Um, I learned how to scale down a lot and just buy exactly what we need, not, you know, based on cuteness. That's not teaching them anything. It's not really at all. Um, and that, like I said, that money, you know, money that I save going to the store for, you know, regular uh, retail prices, that money is actually being saved. <coughs> I'm not taking that money and just saying, okay, well, I'm just going to go to the thrift store and just spend this much money and I didn't have to spend the 
rest, you know, um, what is that, Duggar Theory, buy you, save the difference. Actually save the difference. Save it somewhere. Put it in the bank. Put it in a sock. I don't care what you do with it. Just save it. You will find out that that money adds up to a lot. Um, what can I say? Change. You have change at the end of the day. If you are changed into a, um, a large jar, save that money for a year. <coughs> at the end of that year, challenge yourself to save it for another year. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, coughing still. Uh, you will be surprised how fast that money ends up. And even if it's a dollar, you know, if you're tempted, ch uh, turn it into some change and chuck it in the jar. Put it away and honestly don't spend it. Let me tell you, my ex-husband used to do that. Um, and we still do that now. But he used to do that. Um, that was something he did even before I met him. He bought my wedding ring with his change. That's just, you know, that's how far you can you can take things. So when I saw that, I knew, okay, yeah, we, we're on to something. We're getting ready to build something. Um, earnest money. Put down on the house, $500 earnest money. Change. Literally change. It wasn't let's go write a check. It was changed. Let's get this money and take it to the bank. <coughs> so, again, raising a large family is not hard at all. I'm not saying it's easy. There are, um, it, it's, a, it's a work in progress is what it is. You have to have the same things in common. You have to have a common goal, and you have to know that it is a financial responsibility for those kids for the 18 years of their life, whether it's one, four, five, or ten. Set a good foundation for these kids. Do not sell them short just because you want to have as many as you want to. And say, well, I chose to have... 10 kids, and this is how we're going to live. Don't do that because they're going to regret. They're going to start regretting the siblings after a point. And then once they get older, they're going to say, you know what? You had all these kids, and you didn't even care about me. You know, we're living like this. We're eating this. We're wearing hand-me-downs. You know, why can't we be like everybody else? That's what's going to happen. And you don't want that to happen, and it shouldn't happen. Um, you know, I hate to, um, I didn't want, I, I'm not trying to start any, you know, controversy or anything. Um, this is just, you know, straight away um, my real life experience. You know, I've been there. Like I said, I've been to, from the bottom to the top, back down to the bottom. Um, so I know, you know, I can really speak, I can really um, give you my experiences. There's plenty more. You know, even today, I didn't even touch on how things are actually today, you know, with the kids. It was just pretty much the foundation. Things are pretty much going the same way. Um... You know, they're just more expensive. You know, somebody said, um, we were talking about school supplies, and they thought, well, uh, I think it was a picture, and I saw the picture, and I said, oh, I wish that was all I had to buy, you know. And, um, and they said, well, this is, you know, pretty much what we have to get for the year. And I thought, wow, and I just spent all this money on these kids, and they said, you know, they don't do that here. And I said, well, because your kids are in, you know, elementary school, really, you know, first grade, kindergarten. But, you know, once they get to middle school, it's a different ball game. So, yeah, that's another thing to think about. If you've got four or five kids and they're only, you know, seven and under, 
um, and you're thinking, you know, we're making it, it's going to get harder. Face the reality of that. Everybody's not going to want hand-me-downs. Every, everybody's not going to be able to use hand-me-downs um, within the same family. We didn't do it a lot. One of my girls was always bigger than the other one. So we could even though she wasn't the oldest. Uh, my son was the only boy. There were no hand-me-downs. So I always had to buy him new clothes. But I learned with that money that I saved in, I think, the first six months of his life, I had bought all his clothes up until he was um, three or four years old. He had a whole wardrobe. So I didn't have to go season after season. I went to his closet. That's what I did with that money that I saved. Um, everybody's not going to, you know, shoes. Shoes are just, I mean, a major deal in itself. Shoes are expensive. I think, uh, what, I remember um, preschool, kindergarten, paying $50 for one kid a pair of shoes. You know, the kids got to have a decent pair of shoes. So you multiply that by five or six. Well, I had to get a personal account at Nike because I was spending $500 at a time. They were calling to verify, was it really me? And I said, yeah. So they said, look, this is what we're going to do. Because I would know at a certain month, um, every couple months, I would buy X amount of pair of shoes. And that's just how things work. I didn't cry about it. You know, I know everybody can't do that, but if you're having these kids, there's a responsibility is really what I'm saying. Um, they're, yeah, they're going to cost you more the older they get. So don't settle for, okay, well, you know, we're fine now, and, you know, this is good, and, you know, we're making it. Things are going to change drastically. Anything can happen to either one of you. Your income could change drastically. And if you don't have a plan, you're going to be SOL. So, again, I don't want to come across as um, offending anybody or anything like that. I just, I need to get this out there, and I see it's quite long. But um, it's a reality. You know, it's a truth. Um, I'm a real person. I'm not, you know, a TV show. Nobody's paying me to do this. You know, you see shows on TV where, the, you know, family six tuplets, octuplets and all that, and they get all of this and they get all of that. I'm not getting that. I'm just trying to, you know, keep it real. Um, and I wish I was, but, yeah, was, you know, that's just not life. Um, yeah, we're not just, I'm not just sitting here. I'm not taking anybody's money. I'm not sitting on the government. I don't even qualify for any, um, any government, you know, and that's just not something I'm just going to sit here and collect anyway. Um, so I don't want nobody to get that in, you know, in their head that I'm just, that's what I'm doing. I'm sitting here on YouTube and having these babies, and I'm just never going to stop. I'm not costing anybody anything. If anything, I'm paying more. Um, it just, it is what it is. And even if I had to um, depend on anybody, I paid more out anyway. I, I, w I would be due, you know, really. Um, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm, I'm above it. I'm beyond it because anything can happen to me, and I may need help. You know, that's just the reality of things, and people have to realize that nobody is um, guaranteed work. You know, you can lose your job tomorrow, but you have to have a plan. You have to be prepared for all of that. You know, it's just things are not going to be so set in stone all the time. Um, I hope you guys... You know, I know I'm going to get a lot of comments, probably a lot of flack. I'm really interested in see, seeing, you know, what's going to become of this. Um, is there anything I left out? Something that somebody wanted to see I didn't talk about? There may be. I was just pretty much going off the top of my head. But, um, like I said, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really unscripted. So... 
I hope you guys took something out of this. Um, and good luck to you if you are wanting to expand your family, you know, beyond three children, four children, five children, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. God bless you. You know, that, that, that children are a gift. And I'm just going to leave on that note.